Hello, I am Abby. I am Top Knot Stitcher. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me here today. Um, this is a floss tube channel all about cross stitch. We're all still saying that, so I'm still going to say it. Um, happy 2020. I hope you are having a wonderful new year so far, a new decade. It was a full moon yesterday. Like it's just, it's just a great, a great day. Um, today is brought to you by Trader Joe's Lemon Elderflower Soda. Um, this is maybe new, I'm not sure, but it's new to us. Um, and it's a little too sweet, but I'm going to drink it anyway today while we talk. Cheers. I think this would be really good actually if you cut it with like regular just sparkling water. Maybe I'll do that later. Maybe not. Who knows? Okay. Um, let's, let's get into all the things. I meant to make this video two weeks ago, but I was taken down by the flu. I spent Christmas in Kentucky with my family and it was a wonderful trip. Um, I even got to go on a little road trip down to Nashville and got to see my evil twin Ryan. We went to see Cinderella, the musical, and it was just amazing. Uh, truly, truly wonderful. And then a few days later, I got on the plane and flew back to California. Um, and like on my first flight, I was kind of like, oh, I don't feel great, but you know, I had to wake up at 4 a.m. and it's a plane and I'm sure I'm fine. No, no, I stopped uh, over my layover. I picked up coffee. So I thought maybe I just needed coffee. Um, that didn't do it because on my next flight, which was two hours over the course of that flight, I just became deathly ill and I came down with the flu, which I really don't recommend. Um, dragged myself home, dragged myself to uh, CVS, got some supplies, and then I basically didn't move for like five days. Um, fortunately, there's an urgent care doctor that's like two blocks from me. So I did, I did go and get like full on meds, um, confirmed it was the actual flu, which was not enjoyable. Um, and I finally am feeling back to normal. Mostly my voice is a little raspy. I'm going to try really hard not to cough at you all today, but apologies and thank you in advance for putting up with that. Um, <clears throat> just a little, oh no. <clears throat> okay. Let's make that the only cough. Yeah. Uh, I went to a concert last night and it was like a, like a folk music concert. So like people are quiet and it's like very, very intricate instrumental stuff. Right. So like you don't want to cough. And I was very cognizant of coughing during applause. <laughs> uh, and it was, it was challenging, but I did it because I didn't want to be that person. So I'm going to try not to be that person right now as well. Anyway, um, I was really bummed to come down with the flu, not only because it was awful and it ruined my two holiday days to have at home before I went back to work, uh, but I really didn't get any stitching in in that time because I was like so miserably sick and achy and cranky and just like bleh, that like I couldn't even... I couldn't even stitch. I watched a lot of TV, um, which was mostly enjoyable. And I, what did I watch? I was, I was just going to tell you what show I was binge watching for most of that time. Oh, uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. It was wonderful. Um, I had seen a couple of the episodes of the first season, like way back in the day. And I was kind of like, eh, this isn't for me. Um, but it's a really good show if you have the flu. Uh, it's, it's really like dramatic and ridiculous and they break out into song all the time and they're like really good, <laughs> good songs. Um, they're very specific to the show. So they're not like songs I would listen to in my normal life. Um, but they're really wonderful and they move the story along and they did, they do a lot of really cool, like music video spoofs and, uh, it was, it was truly, truly excellent. And they do a lot of really important, um, coverage and exposure of mental health, which I also really enjoyed. So I uh, would recommend checking that out if you are a fan of like rom-coms and also musicals. Uh, so I watched a lot of that. And then I also just started, I didn't really watch Floss Tube because I was so bummed that I wasn't stitching and I 
had planned to make my like 2019 wrap up and do like a whip parade and 2020 plans and like all the things and I couldn't because I was dying. Uh, so I didn't really, I've taken a couple weeks off of floss too and been watching TV, which is kind of a refreshing change. Um, I also just started watching The Resident, which is, I think, a Fox show, maybe NBC. I don't know. They're airing their third season right now. Um, but the guy who plays Logan in Gilmore Girls, he's a doctor on the show. And it's kind of like Grey's Anatomy, except that some of the doctors are evil. Like, they're up to some shady, shady shady business. So, um, I started watching that and it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, it's also a little bit less surgical than Grey's Anatomy, which I am enjoying. Um, and yeah, so two kind of unexpected new shows in my life. Uh, I encourage you to give them a shot. Let's stop talking about me and let's start talking about stitching. Cause that's why we're here. Um, today is going to mostly just be a December recap. I have a good amount of haul and stitchy happy mail to share. Um, I really only have like one project that I've worked on since we last talked, so I'll show you that. And then I have one thing that I'm starting uh, today probably, um, and then one thing that I started but I'm going to restart, so I'll show you those. I also have two whips, not whips. I have two FFOs, excuse me. I have a bunch of giveaways to do, which is super exciting. And then talk a little bit about 2020. I'm, I'm going to film that video um, probably maybe this weekend. Who knows? We'll find out. Um, a little bit of shop news, uh, a little bit of shout outs, and whatever else we come up with. GM is peacefully looking out the window right now, but he might make an appearance. He's been a little feisty today. We took Today was the day we finally took our Christmas decorations down and our tree because I was too sick to do it when we normally would have done it. Um, and so he got a little wired while we were doing that because he wanted to play with everything. Um, so if he misbehaves, I do have his spray bottle handy because he does like to bite sometimes. So with that being said, let's go into giveaways. Uh, in my last video, well, last like floss tube full video. Um, I was offering a needle minder from my shop, topknotstitcher.com. And I also was giving away this lovely little scissor fob. Um, ah! Oh, it has some buttons too. I just dropped them all. Um, this lovely little scissor fob that I got from uh, the designer of Fectora Stitch. I'll link her below. I carry printed copies of her charts in my shop. Um, and so all you had to do to comment was leave, or to enter was leave a comment with a favorite needle minder from my shop. And I decided in the spirit of Stitchy Christmas and Stitchy New Year, instead of one winner, we're gonna do five winners. What? Um, so I'm super excited to share this with you today. The first winner gets the scissor fob and the needle minder that they chose. You find my list. So this goes to Sarah King of Our Stitching Kingdom. I will link her channel below. She's super sweet and awesome. Um, and she, okay, I've got them all here, but I'll show you. She said she loved this little frozen stained glass style. Isn't that cute? Um, so Sarah, congratulations. I will be sending that to you along with the fob. And I have your address, I think. Okay. Next up, dun, 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 Cassie G. And she said that she loved anything Christmas or uh, Harry Potter related. And Cassie was also the winner of this iced tea past the stash that I still haven't sent her. So I'm going to send it with her. And so because I'm late sending that, she is going to be receiving a little Christmas Santa stamp. So cute. And this is new, it's not listed yet. Uh, this is a little, one of those little, you know, these things, what is this called? Like street signs? But you really only see it in like storybooks with all this kind of stuff. Um, but it's all different 
Harry Potter places like Hogwarts, Gringotts, Hagrid's Hut, Diagon Alley, Azkaban, oh my goodness, um, Forbidden Forest, Hogsmeade, and Ollivanders. Cute. So that goes to Cassie. And our third winner is Janet George. And she was super into this little sewing machine. And this, I don't have it with me, but it comes with a heart-shaped backing magnet. Adorable. So congratulations, Janet. I will comment on your comment. Please send me your address and I will get that out to you. Um, number four was Mandy Parker, who also loves Gilmore Girls. So like, girl, you should probably go check out The Resident. Um, she got a Luke Steiner one. Excellent choice. And last but not least um, is Geeky Girls Knit and Cross Stitch. And now I'm not going to be able to remember your names. And I'm so sorry. They have a channel. They're wonderful. Go check them out. And um, one of them, not sure which one, um, let me know, <laughs> was into this orange cat cameo. Adorable. So congratulations to you all. Thank you all for entering and checking out my shop. Super appreciate it. Um, and I will get those out in the mail within the next uh, week or so. Um, if you have one, please email me at topknotstitcher at gmail.com or message me on Instagram with your address and I will get those to you. Um, next time, here's the new giveaway that we will give away um, in my next like monthly update video. So you have, let's say, until the end of January to comment um, if you want to enter to win scissors. Um, I love carrying like fun and funky scissors. Uh, so in my shop, I've got, it all started with cat scissors, of course. So I have cat scissors in a few different colors. I have like pineapples. I have snakes. I have a couple that are just pretty, like I have this really pretty green pair right now. Uh, I forget what else, but I have these awesome Big Ben. Isn't that cool? And I like these because they're a little bit more substantial. Um, could really do some damage. Don't do that. Um, but they're also not crazy, crazy sharp at the tip because I do stab myself a lot with scissors can't be trusted with them. Um, so if you would like to win a pair of Big Ben embroidery scissors, please leave a comment below uh, and just use Big Ben in your comment. I encourage you to get creative. Like, have you ever been to London? Have you been to Big Ben? Is that a thing? I'm sure it is. Can you go, like, go into it? I, don't, I know nothing about it. I have not been to London, but if you are just into architecture. They're also cool scissors. Uh, so just leave a comment below and you will be entered. You have until the end of January. And with that, we're gonna move into stitching. Sounds good. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Thank you all, those of you who have ordered from my shop. Um, launched it officially in like, April, I think I should find out. Um, and it's really, really grown a lot in the last few months. And I'm super, super appreciative. Um, those of you who have purchased from me or shared it or just like favorited it on Etsy, like all of those things make me super, super happy. So thank you. Um, I'm going to also take this moment right now while we're appreciating you all to remind you to subscribe, hit the notification, hit the thumbs up, all the things. Um, all of those things are really important for the YouTube algorithms to uh, make this video show up in your feed and in other people's feed who are, enjoy floss tube uh, and helps me out as a creator. Uh, creator, that sounds so weird. Um, but it helps me feel encouraged and inspired to keep doing this because there's a lot of people making floss tube, which is wonderful, but it also is very much like, why am I bothering sometimes? Um, and anytime I see like, engagement from from you all it makes me so happy because I'm like oh yeah that's why I'm doing it like I don't care how many people I have following me um it's very exciting though to get 
new subscribers and new new people in the top knot family um but like i'm not really concerned about the numbers i just it, it really helps me feel like oh yeah people still people still want this from me i hope um, and if I'm not your, if I'm not your jam, that's okay. You can unsubscribe and ignore me and we can still be friends. Um, I wanted, this is a good opportunity though, to share that, uh, in the shop, I have a bunch of new items that are getting photographed and will be listed soon. Some new needle binders, um, some new scissors, although those might, those will probably be last, um, so mostly needle minders. But in other exciting news, I am going to the Nashville market. Ah! Um, I have officially booked my flights and booked a hotel. I'm not saying at the Embassy Suites because I'm not made of money. Uh, and they've been booked for a long while. Um, but I'm super excited. It's my first year attending. I will be attending as a buyer, but I will also be scoping things out as a, you know, aspiring designer. Um, I'm super excited to get to reconnect with a bunch of stitching friends and also meet some new, new people in the stitchy community. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing yet. So if you have any tips for me, please let me know. I would love to chat Nashville if you've gone before, uh, as a shop and, uh, or if as a buyer, you have opinions on what you want me to do. I don't really know. Um, right now I carry... Michelle Bendy Stitchy's charts, and I carry um, a Russian designer, Factura Stitch. And beyond that, I don't really know where we're going to go, but we're going to do something that's going to be exciting. So if you have ideas, please let me know. I would appreciate it. And with that, let's talk stitching. Um, so I'm going to show you, I had kind of like two mini finishes and a new start. And I'll show you what I mean. And I need to take it out of the Q-snap, so I will chit-chat while I tell you. Um, right after I filmed my December update, um, I was working on a couple other Christmas pieces, but then I pretty much didn't touch them. Um, and I only took, I took this project home for the holidays, but I did not, I think I brought Biltmore Christmas, but I didn't stitch on it. So this, I've only stitched on this. Um, I have no progress to show you on other, other things yet. But I have finished two of the three Wild Violet Christmas in Space stamp patterns. That's not the name. It's a, let me, let me pull it up so I can show you. Oh, Christmas in Space post, postage stamps. I was very, very close. <gasps> And I'm stitching them all together on the same fabric and like, oh, how amazing. I love them so much. Um, so I showed Rudolph when I did my tag video. He was like, I don't know, halfway done maybe. Um, so he's finished. Look how cute he is. Oh my goodness. Um, he is stitched in all of the called for, except I didn't have the color for his, uh, his body. So that is Classic Color Works Walnut chestnut one of those I have it written somewhere if you need to know um oh he's so cute and this is all stitched on a 32 count charcoal Belfast linen which I think is by Zweigart I can confirm that I think it's Zweigart not Wichold um love him the other day I finished Santa Santa in space I think his name is actually Astronaut Santa. Um, but there he is on the moon with his present, looking so jolly and adorable. He is also charted in all of the called for, except for one color, because I thought that would be a good theme to keep going. So his spacesuit, um, instead of, it's charted for a similar, like light bluish color. And instead I pulled this uh, Victorian motto I think it's called summer winds and it has a tiny bit of variegation that you can see in person you can't really see it on screen um but it's like a periwinkle kind of color so i thought that was a fun little twist oh he's so cute 
Um, and then I've just started and mostly I've just stitched the border until I ran out of 3865. Um, but next up will be his rocket, which is his sleigh, of course. So it's a little tiny Santa in a sleigh. Um, I'm super excited. I've got a little Santa stamp needle minder to go with it because how could you not? Um, and so I, I'm a little torn between wanting to stitch him and finish him, but someone else has already stitched all three and finished them. So I was like, well, if I can't be the first, why bother? Not really. Um, but I have really kind of liked being monogamous on this project, um, for the last couple weeks. So I might just keep doing that until he's done. I was going to maybe put, a, put aside all Christmas stitching, but I think I'll put aside other Christmas stitching and not this. I don't know. We're going to stitch what we feel like. We'll talk about that when we talk plans. Um, but I am super excited. And I think that I have a frame that would actually fit these. Um, it's a frame that I picked up to use for um, a la -dee da You know, she's got like a lot of long skinny designs. And I picked it up to use for that. And it was not... It was not the, it was like too big and too boring, but I think it w could work for this. So I have to, I'll have to dig that out and see when it gets closer. Um, I'm super, super stoked. This is by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. I will link her below. Um, and this is one of her more recent designs and it's just freaking adorable and you all need to stitch it immediately, immediately. So. That is most of my stitching. I do have technically, well, I didn't start one of them. I have one new start <laughs> um, and then an aspirational new start that I want to do this weekend. Um, I am doing two sals this year and I'm pretty excited for both of them, um, but I have already failed <laughs> at the first one. So uh, Peppermint Purple, designs cross stitch something like that i'll link her below um she does a lot of black work designs and she is doing a free black work weekly stitch along this year and it looks awesome so the design itself is like a whole bunch of little tiny boxes and then each week you get a black work pattern to fit inside of those boxes and it's charted in this really pretty like reds blues and purples kind of thing so um but of course, a lot of people are doing different colors. And I had this idea and I liked this color combination and it has not worked out. Plus I discovered that this fabric will be too small for the project. Um, but I just, I had this beautiful, creamy, yellowy deliciousness. This is a 28 count Golden Blossom Lugana that I picked up at Silk Weavers. Um, well, Needleworkers Delight. And I have this Otterly and X Stitches floss. That's this like beautiful orange and then it fades to this lovely little like seafoam green. It's called Best Coast or, or maybe West Coast. I think it's Best Coast. It doesn't matter because it is the Best Coast. Um, and like, I just thought that was so pretty together. Now, you might be like, isn't that gonna be hard to see? And I was like, yes, but that's like part of what's gonna make it so cool, you know? It'll be real understated. And it does blend in a little bit too much. I've done like a third of the first block. Um, so you can see it does, a lot of it does blend in. More importantly, this fabric is too small uh, for the project. It's gonna be, I'm not gonna be able to remember right now. But this piece is nine by 13, the project is bigger than that. So, not a lot bigger but enough bigger. Um, so I am going to restart it. I am going to still use this thread because I think it's really, really, really pretty. Um, I don't often like the super variegated that goes to like two totally different colors like this, but there is something about this that I just will never get over. So I'm thinking of putting it on black so it can really pop. I don't really want to stitch black work on black Ada. Although I actually do have another black work piece I'm doing gray on black. So I guess that's fine. Uh, so hopefully next time we talk, I will have caught up. Uh, 
I think week two is out already. So I need to get get to work, but I think that will I think that will do quite nicely. So I'm excited to restart that. Um, I will link the Facebook group down below if you want to uh, sign up, follow along as well. People are like wonderfully, I mean, like most Stitchy Sal Facebook groups, like people are wonderfully helpful in sharing like their black work and backstitching tips and tricks. Um, there are a lot of people who have shown the back of their piece and it does not match the front because um, there's a way of stitching black work where you can have it like mirrored. You don't have to, you can just stitch, uh, which is what I will be doing. Um, so it's a lovely low pressure situation if you want to try out a little bit of black work. And I'm really stoked about the weekly breakdown. Um, I have never done that before. Um, well, I've abandoned most mystery stitch alongs that I've tried. Um, but I just think that's a really, it's a really nice manageable piece. A lot of people are saying it took them like an hour or two to do the first or to do like each week. So uh, I'm excited for that this year. We'll see how, how it goes. The other project that I have not actually started, I almost started it last night and then I couldn't find any 310. <laughs> so I couldn't start it. Um, these are silly problems to have. Um, I really should just buy a cone of 310. But I uh, ordered the fabric for this cell um, on one, two, three stitch because I could not find it anywhere else. And um, let me let me tell you and show you what it is. Uh, so you know her, you love her, Brittany Ingleside Imaginarium. She is behind the gorgeous cells such as the Birthstone Dragons. Those were super cool. Um, she did the Gargoyles of Notre Dame. And last year, she didn't do a full year maybe like six months or something, she did uh, kind of like a Game, and Thro Game of Thrones inspired piece. So it was like all these different house sigils and animals and it was super cool. None of those were really my style. Um, so I eager eagerly followed along but didn't really feel called to stitch those. Okay, why are you being dumb? Um, but then she announced the theme for this year. My iPad is frozen. How could you? Okay, please stop. Thank you. Okay, she announced the theme for this year, which was a witch's familiars catalog. It's so cool. So it has this whole little like backstory. Um, then the pattern is called Kaluna Brightburn's Catalog for Witches Familiars. And so each month uh, you get a different familiar to stitch. Uh, and of course the first month is a cat. So I'm a fan. And the called for fabric is Murky by Picture This Plus. I've never stitched on Murky before because this is not normally my cup of tea, but it did seem rather perfect for this piece. And it doesn't have, it's charted for like seven colors or something, um, which I like because then I feel like you get to enjoy the fabric with it too. Ooh, I'm very excited. Um, I ended up going with a 32 count Lugana for this and I just got a, a fat quarter, um, be, or fat, yeah, this is, this is a fat quarter. Yes. Is it? I could be staring at you all day. It's 17 by 25. I think that's a fat quarter. Or is that a fat half? Because a yard would be 36. Doesn't matter. You get it. I'm going to stop sounding dumb. Um, I bought it without having seen the first month because I knew that Brittany would do an amazing job with it and because I knew that somewhere in here would be a cat, obviously. Um, but the border is also super cool. So this is what it looks like so far with the first month. So you have the cat or the felis if you will oh look how cute he is and so the ch it's mostly charted in like grays and then the black and then the color 
I'm excited for. Um, ooh, I haven't pulled all, all of the grays and stuff yet, but it's great. Um, and then you have Gassed Butter Crunch is the orange and Huckleberry is the blue, which I bought a new skein. I'm pretty sure I have this already. I should be better about that. Okay, so I'm going to be starting this today once I get some 310, you know, pulled from another project. And I'm super, super stoked. Um, if you need to stitch your own catalog of familiars, I will link Brittany's Etsy below, as well as the channel, I mean, the video, floss, well, her channel, but the floss tube where she shows the first month's design. Also, I picked up this little bag from the Target dollar section. It was $3. They had these last Christmas as well. And um, I went like maybe two weeks before Christmas and they had a ton of them. I'm going to go to Target later today and see if they have any left because if they have them, they might be half off. Um, but it's a super awesome little padded bag that makes for a perfect project bag. And they had a few different designs and some solid gray ones and I love them. I bought I think just two of them last year and then I gave one away and then I lost the other one somehow. Um, it didn't have stitching in it thankfully um, and I really regret, regretted not buying more. I bought a couple of these that I ended up using as gift wrap for Christmas gifts this year um, as a nice bonus gift and reusable sustainable wrapping solutions. So that's my news. That is all I've stitched on or attempted stitching on so far. I have been a little bit torn for 2020. I want to kind of be a little monogamous because I'm enjoying it. Um, at least for like smaller pieces. Um, but I also really want to like stitch on everything. So I think aside from the those two stitch alongs, I think what I'm excuse me going to do after I finish ast uh, the Rocket Santa is either like pick one or two projects that I will like work on until they're done, or I'm gonna go with the like the wheel of whips um, to select a project and then another wheel that I want to make that's like a stitchy goal because I'm not, I'm in Enchanted Stitches and I'm in Magical Stitches, which is also now doing a Disney themed uh, year of challenges, but I'm just not into it. It's a little, it's just too, it's too much to like find things that fit certain challenges and whatever. Um, and I know that there are a lot of other like stitchy challenges and groups and stuff that I could make work for me, but that all sounds like way too much to keep track of. So I was thinking, what if I make a wheel that has different goals on it? And so it might be like, finish the project, which would be intense. It might be like, stitch on this for one week. It might be stitch on something for two hours. It might be put in a thousand stitches, but I don't, I mean, I would like estimate it because I wouldn't be counting it for a challenge, but I don't know, it sounds like a lot of work. Or like, you know, pick a section to stitch or like stitch one page or stitch one 10 by 10, not 10 by 10, but like 100 by 100 block or I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be, um, but something like that, like giving myself little mini challenges to go with each whip. Um, cause I do really find that so motivating to actually like pick something up and be like, Ooh, I have a purpose behind this. Like for like rocket Santa, like, Ooh, I need to stitch the whole planet before I do anything else. Uh, I think that would work really well for me and it would still give me a lot of flexibility to be like, well, actually I want to do this instead. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Uh, I think it could be fun and I already have a wheel of, uh, whips and new starts that just needs some updating. So I'm like most of the way there, I just need to make my new goal setting wheel. If you have any ideas for what I should put on it, let me know. Okay, so with that, oh no, I do have two FFOs to share. The first one I teased last time, I hadn't gotten it yet, but Birdie, 
my roommate, made me a pattern. She designed it, she stitched it, and she FFO'd it. I know, right? Who is she? Um, so I have been long joking that I needed to make a... He was attacking my toes. I have long joked that I needed to make a pattern with my personal uh, motto, which is, but what if I don't? I am a rather lazy person. I have uh, challenges. I'm an Enneagram 9, if any of you are familiar. So it's the peacemaker, the mediator, and like our cardinal sin is uh, sloth. And we have challenges with energy and just like inertia. So the joke is that nine start slow and then just taper off. So I say it jokingly, but I very often will be like, oh, like I could do that right now, but what if I don't? I'm going to do it tomorrow. And like, that's fine. Um, sometimes it's a problem and I'll procrastinate. Um, but it's a lot. I, I try to be careful of how I manage my energy throughout the day, both like physically and emotionally uh, socially, like all the things. Um, cause I definitely need to, I will burn myself out if I'm not careful. Um, I am not as introverted as I once thought I was, but I do need to be mindful of like how much energy I'm putting into being with other people. Um, and then I take a lot of naps. <laughs> oh, it's good to be a nine. Life is good. Uh, but it's tiring. So I have this, I say this a lot, but what if I don't? And, uh, Birdie has charted this for me and stitched it for me. Ah! Do you love it? I love it so much. Uh, I forget what color she used, but I had this green Ada, uh, which was perfect. And I love it. I love that the border and the leaves kind of blend in, but they're still there. So it gives like a really cool texture to it. Uh, she got this really cute frame on Amazon. It's a little four by four square frame, which it can be super hard to find. And she said it was like seven bucks or something. So that's a good mental note. Um, it's so cute. I love it so much. I just like raved about it when she first gave it to me and cried and just, it's so good. I'm so proud. Um, so I might chart it up and sell it as a PDF if you want to stitch my personal motto. It's so, so good. I actually have, I have a lot of like life mantras that I would really like to make into a series of cross stitches, but I just, it's kind of low on my list. But now I've got the first and most important one taken care of, which is super exciting. Um, the next FFO that I have to share is super exciting one that is combined with a shop update. I'm going to take a sip. Hold on. Build the suspense. Um, I bought this kit online uh, to make a little embroidered necklace. What? And it's ginkgo leaves. You know, I love... Why is, does not really look focused on that, does it? You get the idea. Um, I love ginkgo leaves. I have a ginkgo tattoo. You can't see it. Uh, I have a ginkgo ring. It's not on. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, I love ginkgos. And so I saw this design and I was like, oh, yes, I need it. I've never done embroidery before. Um, I definitely got better as I went. So the last half of a leaf that I did is the best one. Um, but I super, super love it. And I got this awesome little brooch pendant thing um, that I will be carrying in my shop soon. They are on their way to me. Um, I have, I'm getting two different designs, uh, and then it comes with a little domed piece that you can wrap your fabric around. And then that's wonderful because it gives you, you've, there's like space underneath to like put the ex extra fabric. And then I just glued it on, um, I had it clamped with some clothespins overnight and it's held up super well so far. Um, and I just absolutely love it. I broke the chain because um, I was yanking this out of my suitcase this morning, which I don't recommend doing. Um, but I'll fix that and then I can wear it again. I love it so much. 
Um, so you'll be seeing that soon, and you might see a couple, a couple little designs that would fit in this coming out from a couple of your favorite people, namely one of my favorite people, my evil twin. Spoilers. Um, I will also probably chart something up. I'm not sure what. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, I wore it like the I. Embroidery is great because it's super, super fast, <laughs> like super fast. So I made this whole thing within like 45 minutes um, and then it was ready the next day after the glue had dried and then I wore it for a whole week while I was home because I was obsessed with it. And it was really fun to have people ask about it and be like, I made this, look at it and brag about it. So fun. Okay, with that, we are gonna move into happy mail and haul. So if that's not your thing, you can peace out. I won't be offended. Um, I don't really have any books to share. I told you about my TV shows. I haven't really been reading as much, which I don't love. Uh, I've been doing a lot of podcasts instead of audiobooks, which I don't love. So if you have any good audiobook recommendations, please leave them below. I would like to get back into that. Um, it's just been, I don't know. My brain is so tired from work that it doesn't want to read for fun right now. So try not to force it, but if you have any good recommendations, I would love to hear them. I need to go watch Julie. She always has great book recommendations. I'll do that. Okay, we're gonna go through this box. It is a mixture of things that I have purchased in the last month, things that I have received as gifts. Not everything, I'm not gonna show every like Christmas card and all that but if you sent me a Christmas card, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I did not send any out this year and I just have to be okay with that because uh, I really like sending cards. I was gonna make a card with me and Jam this year, didn't. It's just gotta be okay. So I will just go through my treasures here. I got a card from Lindy Stitches with her little Christmas freebie that says sprinkle Christmas kindness and it's so cute and she did hers in a little tart and I want to do it in a little tart and I'm so excited. Ooh. Um, I received a few really lovely cards that included floss which was adorable. Like Arlene sent me this lovely blue $7.96 if you're curious. Also this card is super pretty. Arlene, great choice. Um... Amy sent me a card, love her. Cassandra sent a card that was very glittery, but she also included some thread drops with little hearts. Oh, it's so cute. And they're like super fun, cute paper. I love that, so thank you. Got it. Oh, these are all mixed together. I'm not gonna show you every card because I just said that I wasn't going to. Of course, though, I need to show you my card from the Bee Sisters. Oh, they're so funny. Um, okay, for Christmas this year, uh, in my family, we exchange names and you get a gift for like my big extended family. Stockings are a very serious deal. I posted a picture of our stockings on my Instagram. I recommend you check it out. It's intense. Um, and then for like a gift, we draw names. And so my cousin Michael had me and, um, you know, he asked my sister what I might like and she said, uh, floss. And he was like, what is that? Um, but he really knocked it out of the park for, uh, uh, many reasons. He made this box. It's stunning. I'm gonna fill it with all kind of stitchy treasures. I'm so excited. Um, he made it. Like I didn't know that he did this. Ah, it's so cool. I'm still just absolutely floored. And then inside of it, um, I'm obviously not using this yet. <laughs> um, but he knows that I make videos because my whole family knows about me, knows about us now. <laughs> um, he got me a little microphone. Uh, so I can have top-notch audio quality for you all. I did not did not use it yet because um, I forgot about it until I had already started filming. But thank you, Michael. You're probably not watching this. 
um, I'm super excited to, to try that out. And then he went to the LNS in Louisville and picked up some orange floss because that's his favorite color. Orange is the favorite color of a lot of people in my family. I did not realize, but it sparked a whole discussion at Christmas. Um, and orange is one of my favorite colors because of jam. I have an orange car. It's like a whole lot of things, but like, ah, he did such a good job. Um, so this is Weeks Autumn Leaves, Pumpkin, Clockwork, and Fiesta. And he did two of each, so I can really go all out. So it was like a pretty excellent, like you did a really, really great job. Yes, you did. Um, while I was home, my sister and I also did a little bit of thrift store shopping. And I mean a little bit. We only went to one thrift store, but... Uh, we went in and she was like, oh, this one never really has anything good. Uh, they did that that time around. I ended up putting a few things back because I, while they were like great finds, great deals, they were not worth carting back across the country. Um, but one of the things I found that you know I picked up immediately because you do not leave them behind was a circle trivet. So you know, Michelle finds these like every five seconds. Um, and she has kindly sent me one in the mail before because I never find them, <laughs> uh, which was super, super sweet of her. And I've never ever found one till now. The tile is like creaking in here. It looks like it's just held in place with 3M strips so I can take it off. It's kind of a cute tile. If it didn't say Joyce, it's just a little cute little kitchen some apple pie fixins. It's cute. Uh, so I have a couple of different ideas of what I might put inside of this. I'm not going to tell you yet, but I'm so proud. It was $3. I'm so excited. I think I kind of scared my sister with how excited I was for it. Um, and then I also could not resist this cute, tiny little uh, cream picture thing because it was it was it's just it's so cute and it was a dollar and at my mom's house she found this somewhere maybe from my grandmother's house I don't remember maybe just at an antique store and picked it up to use as its intended purpose for flowers a little flower fl frog but it's orange favorite color um and I don't have any glass frogs and it's a thing we all need them I guess um, but I thought to myself, you know, this would probably fit this. I wonder if I'm right. And it's a little, it's a little bit not even, but it does fit. So that'll probably be how it is for right now. Maybe not forever, but I'm super, super excited. That's so cool. Oh. So pretty great thrift score. Um, and then in the process of being at my sister's house, I found and took this bag that she had gotten uh, a gift in this bag from one of her students, I think. And I was like, um, do you need that? And she said, no. And I said, can I have it? And she said, yes. It's this cute little tote bag with these little stick people doing yoga. I cannot even. Um, it's like really a nice little sturdy burlapy bag with a nice it's a nice size um and it zips so you know I'll be using this to hold some cross stitch stuff I'm not really sure exactly what all I'll do maybe it'll be my like retreat cross stitch bag it's a little small I tend to need a lot of stuff but it's just so cute um and she the student that gave this to her was from India. I can't remember if she said this bag was from India or not. Um, but I love it. So thank you for letting me steal it, Vanessa. Okay, and with that... Oh, the other thing that I have done recently, after attending a retreat at Sassy Jack's in North Carolina, um, I found out they have a quarterly subscription box. Um, and it's like... I think it's like $30 or something. And I love that it's quarterly because like you don't need stuff all the time. Um, and 
I signed up for it. Ryan and I both signed up for it after we went to the retreat, which is in like October. The first box came at the end of December. So it was like a fun little surprise because I had kind of forgotten all about it. Um, comes with a letter to explain everything that's inside of it, but I want to share with you what we got this month or this quarter. Um, and if you are interested, you can sign up on the Sassy Jacks website. Um, they gave us one of these little organizer tools. So it's got like silicone little divider things so it can just hold all your stuff. I'm not gonna open it right now, sorry. Um, and then a little packet of goodness. I won't show you every single thing in here. Sorry for the crinkly, sorry. Um, they send out a few charts. I think that it's like everyone gets like, Not everyone got the same charts, that's what I mean. So they're kind of at random. Um, but I got a Meridian Designs little, one of her bikini designs and their little goldfish. I got some real cute Val's stuff, Snowman. Um, I feel like there was one other one that has gotten misplaced. Oops. Um, and then I also got one of their really cool uh, Sassy Jacks. So they do like reproduction samplers, right? So this is one of their samplers, which is Esther Benson 1739, uh, as a little greeting card. And <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, it's just blank inside. But then on the back, there's a little free chart. Um, that's super cute and has a moon. So obviously I will be stitching that. Um, oh, and it's an embroidered moon, too. Interesting. It's got, like, a lot of specialty stitches on it. Um, <clears throat> it looks... It's not the same, but it's, like, similar. There's a moon on the... On Esther Benson's sampler, and there's, like, embroidery. So the, the stitches on the flower look like the stitches on the tree. I don't know. It looks cute. Um, I will definitely stitch it and I will send this card to someone special once I've stitched it. Um, we also got an Esther Benson needle minder, adorable. Um, a little squirrel beeswaxer. Cause that's their, their shop. Cause Jack, Jack stash, Jack the squirrel. So cute. Um, this really cute ribbon for finishing. It's a ruler. Yes. And then a couple other little bits and bobs that I will not spoil if you got this box and haven't opened it yet, which you should have opened it yet. But this is a wooden Hardwick hoop. Is that the right name? Da, 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 da. Hardwick Manor. I was kind of close. Hardwick Manor wooden hoop. It's super super awesome um it recommends wrapping like to protect your fabric and also i imagine help with the tension to wrap the hoop with twill tape which i don't have yet um but i will get it it's a little five inch hoop and i'm super excited because it's adorable so a very successful first month in jack stash highly recommend um and like i'm just so delighted in myself that i treated myself to that uh, because I've, you know, I've done a lot of like thread subscriptions, briefly a fabric of the month, but it's just, it's too easy. It's just too much and I can't stitch that much. Um, so for now, this is perfect. Okay. I also received a really, really lovely Christmas gift from my girl, McKenna Stitching and Sequins. She sent me this chart of a lady with a cat. Miss Polly Nosegay, an original Queenstown sampler design. Um, and then she included a bunch of gray-ish threads because she gets me. Um, so I've got black licorice, soot, midnight, a couple that are upside down that I can't see, but you don't care that much. Uh, so thank you, McKenna. I feel so loved. Um, and then... <clears throat> I mostly just have, oh, and it, no, I have one more thing to show. One thing that my lovely evil twin Ryan made for us. 
which is a needle minder of us being evil. I love it. So evil. Oh, she's fantastic. Um, with that, let me show you a few things I got on Stash and Load real quick. Um, of course, you know them, you love them. Plum Street Samplers, Bowl of Full of Scaries, Scary 2, which is this cute little squirrel. I don't know why I love this so much, but maybe I was just in like a squirrelish mood because of Sassy Jacks. Not sure, but into it. Um, I just could not resist this one because it's so tree-ish and lovely. Autumn Trees by... Annalee weight designs I've never heard of but like it's gorgeous um, and the trees are done in uh, like four different gassed colors but gives it that cool cool variegation love it this I just could not get and it was like 50 cents um, waxing moon dem bones dem bones dem bones dem spooky bones <laughs> oh they just cracked me up so I will need to stitch that soon for Halloween um, I got a couple la -di das because I love the la -di da Got Virtue and Aunt Amy's House. Love it. Picked up because it has moons on it, obviously. Hands-on design, uh, their, uh, the winter solstice. And so it says solitude and serenity, which I love. And I didn't realize it came with the little felt circles for the finishing. So that was cool. These are all from Stash and Load. Did I say that? I think so. Another la -di da humble and kind. <sighs> I just love la -di da I don't know why. Probably because Michelle loves it. Um, I got this Virtue Sampler. I'm trying to remember why exactly I got this, and I don't remember. I just kind of liked it. Um, the the verse is, beauty is a flower that fades away, but virtue is a jewel that will never decay. That's why I think, because I enjoyed that it used the word decay in a beautiful little poem. Um, but it's this lovely little sampler. Cute, right? That's a hillside samplings. Um, and then this one, I also just dug these trees. Um, so this is a carriage house samplings silver landscape. Isn't that cool? On like a really cool fabric I just think that'd be awesome uh, so don't know when I'm gonna stitch that but we'll see oh it's charted for NPS fancy um, this is yeah Marty Bear carriage house cool so I treated myself to all of those uh, probably some other little bits and bobs that have already gotten dispersed to their homes uh, so I will wrap up there. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for putting up with my raspy voice. I hope I didn't, I don't think I really coughed that much, but I hope if I did, it did not irritate. Um, let me know what you're stitching. What's your plans for 2020? Do you want some scissors? Because I know I do. Uh, leave Big Ben in your comment and let me know if you've ever been to London. <clears throat> Excuse me. With that, I got to put this stuff away. I got to take a power nap. I got to get some errands done and buy some floss. It's going to be a great day. Bye.